Good morning and welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing a 38 week update and it's just more of a sit down. I had originally planned on doing something a little more casual, like a day in the life kind of thing, but life has just been a little chaotic lately as we've been prepping and doing all this last minute stuff before baby girl comes. So here we are today. If you're new to my channel, my name is Shanoa. I have one toddler. He is almost 20 months now and I have a baby girl on the way. She is due January 27th so we are in this like literal final stretch on baby watch. She could come actually any day now and that is wild but anyhow. If you're new to my channel I do motherhood and lifestyle videos. I post two times a week and yeah don't forget to subscribe down below and hit that notification bell if you're new and Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the 38 week update. So like I start every single video or every single bump day video, we are going to start today with this week's comparisons. So I get the fun comparisons on the what to expect app and um, this week, I don't know why I'm just like, holy crap, even though it all feels very real. <laughs> Baby is as big as a mini watermelon as big as Princess Buttercup's crown in The Princess Bride. I've never seen that movie, so no reference there. And as big as a speak and spell, like the little gadget from 80s and 90s. That's crazy. But the thing that gets me is the mini watermelon. I'm like, I have to push that out. <laughs> That's literally my thought when I saw that. I was like, is she only gonna get bigger from here? So, uh, women's bodies are amazing. That is literally wild to me. This, I don't know if you can even see. Oh, I just realized I cracked the back of my phone. No, I did. Okay, good. This is currently what baby is looking like. I don't even know if it's focused on her. I mean, she started like on this screen on the Pregnancy Plus app. She started literally so <laughs> small on the screen and now she like takes up the full thing and it is just so crazy to see how big she is. On average at week 38 babies are measuring at about 20 inches and about 7.25 pounds but I tend to have smaller babies. Bash, um, everybody thought he was going to be 8 plus pounds but he was 6, not even 6.5 pounds so he was very small and so I'm just anticipating another small er baby but you never know. We'll see. As far as like things with baby, your baby weighs about 7 pounds this week and is continuing to build up fat under the skin. The digestive system is now capable of digesting liquid foods and your baby is busy peeing at regular intervals. Good job baby girl. <laughs> Most of the lanugo, I don't know if I'm saying that right, the body hair that they have all over them is now gone and any remaining amount will fall out soon after birth. Bash had a lot of that, that stuff on him. When he was born, the Lanugo, he was a quite hairy baby, <laughs> it felt like. And we are officially one week from today, the day that I'm filming this. It will be less by the time you see this. We are one week and four days away <laughs> from my due date. That is crazy. Now <laughs> let's get into actual personal like what i'm how i'm doing all those things so like i said we are one week and 40s away from my official due date and that just feels insane but i'm curious as to when she will come because um if you didn't know my original due date from like my menstrual cycle and my ovulation cycle was January 18th, but she measured at my first appointment and continued to measure up until 20 weeks, um, the last time we had an ultrasound. She was measuring a little bit behind and was measuring more accurately towards a January 27th due date. So I went and asked my good old friends on Instagram, like if you've had a baby and you've had this kind of situation, oh my goodness, my son is like kicking the door right now. He should be, he should be napping, but that's not happening. Let me see if I can talk to him. Sebastian, baby, please go to bed. Thank you. He's just sitting at the door with his legs up, like <laughs> karate chopping the door. So 
Usually if I tell him to go to bed, he's pretty good about going. Oh, there he goes. We'll see if he stays there now. Anyhow, I went to Instagram. I asked any of the other mamas who've had multiple babies what their experience has been, and it was all over the charts. So for some people, they found that going according to the menstrual cycle, if you're really regular, was more accurate for their when their baby actually came. And for some people, it was more of the measurements. So I'm like, okay, well, that was not helpful. <laughs> I was hoping it would be like pretty conclusive one way or the other, but it's not, and that's fine. So I'm just trying to, I've just been praying for peace and for rest and for trust in her and my body and just God's timing overall that it will be, she will come exactly when she needs to and everything will be okay. So that has just been my prayer and we will right at, you know, at this point it's just, we will see. It is a three day weekend this weekend and it is a holiday and I, I read, <laughs> it was actually true for Sebastian. There's like things that induce quote unquote labor, like full moons, storms, things like that. But another one that I read was weekends and holidays. And I'm like, it is a long weekend and it is a holiday. And Monday is my menstrual cycles due date. So <laughs> we will see. I have absolutely no idea, but we will see when she shows up. And like I said, I'm just praying that she will come. I mean, I know she will come when she needs to and when the timing is perfect and the timing is right for her. And so I just am trying to have the trust in God's timing and the trust in her and the trust in my body right now. So trying to focus on that rather than focusing on the days that I have left, on due dates, and all of those shenanigans. Next up, uh, contractions. I have been feeling contractions, um, not super regularly, but I have been feeling them. Um, they were actually decently strong last night, which was super funny because I finished everything on my to-do list last night or yesterday. I've had like several running to-do lists and I finished my last one yesterday. And so I was like, okay, we're done. Baby girl, you can literally come whenever. And then a few hours later, I was feeling contractions just a few minutes apart for like 30 minutes. And I was like, oh my gosh, my words of power. I need to like I'm not actually ready. <laughs> I was like freaking out. But they stopped and everything was fine. I got through the night. So yeah, contractions, they've been like, sometimes they'll come and there will be a couple or maybe just one every hour. They're pretty spread out, not super consistent. Um, and then some days I'll literally go days between. Sometimes I'll go days between contractions. So I don't know. My body, I can tell, is definitely preparing because I like these feel like actual contractions. Whereas with Bash, I never really felt like I had any contractions before we got to the hospital to deliver him. And by that time, my water had broke. So it was like happening. But I had like more Braxton Hicks where it was like I could feel my whole stomach tightening but it wasn't it didn't really feel like my uterus was tightening but this time around it's like oh it is the uterus baby and she is getting prepped and ready <laughs> for baby girl and I'm like ah. <laughs> so uh, it's just crazy even though I've been through this even though I've done this it's still just crazy to me and it's just a little like nerve-wracking and scary to do it all again and like that it's just so soon so anyhow some days i feel like my belly has dropped and she's gotten lower and then other days she is just up high and whatnot last sunday actually we felt like she had dropped and like my belly felt super low i felt like up here was like really squishy and she was like real low down there um and then like the next day she was up high again so <laughs> once again i feel like my body is definitely prepping and i feel like she's teasing us a little bit but nothing is super consistent so we will we'll just see it has been a few weeks since my doctor has checked me um actually this past week i've been over the past like month or two i've been meeting my doctor's associates at his practice so that if for some reason he's not able to make the delivery, I'm at least familiar and have met the other doctors who could potentially deliver baby girl. And so that has been nice that I've been able to become acquainted with them and more comfortable with them. So it's not like a complete stranger is delivering my baby, but they do have like a rule, which I do appreciate that, um, or it's like an unspoken rule, but it's something that I've just kind of like figured out from 
meeting with other doctors is that they don't check me. Uh, they don't check my dilation, they check her positioning, and they listen to her and monitor her, but they don't check dilation or cervix or anything, and only my doctor is checking down there. So I haven't been checked in uh, a little over two weeks now, but last time I was checked, I was 0% dilated, but I was um, softening, my cervix was softening, so that is good, and I'm not too worried about not dilating because I when I went in to give birth to Sebastian, I was zero dilated. Like I, my water had broke and they checked me and they were like, oh, girl, you are nothing. <laughs> so I'm like, even though I'm not dilated, I'm not like freaking out and I'm not in my head about it. Whereas last time I was, because I'm like, this is what my body did last time. So it's fine and my body will do its thing. And if it needs a little bit of like medical help to get there, and to start that process, we will we'll get there when we get there. But until then, I'm just trusting my body. And baby is head down right now. So the the doctor has actually been checking if she's head down since a little after 20 weeks. He's been checking that. And for a while there, she was consistently heads up. And I was getting nervous. I was like, oh my gosh. I mean, I know I have a lot of time. But I don't want to have a C-section because she's breech. I don't want to have... A breech birth I don't want to have complications and I don't want to have to flip her manually because I've heard that that's like really uncomfortable and painful but I would you know I'm willing to do all those things I'm willing to do do what you gotta do you know but I just didn't want to nobody wants to <laughs> but luckily she has flipped and she's been head down consistently for the past month so they still remind me she could change but I'm just praying baby girl will just stay head down and that everything will be okay once again trusting my body trying to trust her trying to trust this whole process so I was literally my body was literally built for this so I just keep reminding myself that you were built for this you were made to birth like your body it is a natural process like you you know what to do your body innately knows what to do without you even thinking about it so it's okay next thing is I feel like I'm like still expecting to go into labor like I did last time so if you didn't know with Sebastian my water broke. It broke in the middle of the night and it was very clear that it was time to go to the hospital and that within, you know, 24 hours or so of my water breaking, he would be with us. It was all very clear and for some reason I have it in my head that this is going to be exactly the same. I am going to, <laughs> whether it's my water breaking or I did, like I'm just gonna have this clear cut sign. It's time to go to the hospital. Like my water is gonna break. I feel like it's always gonna happen in the middle of the night. I just feel like it's gonna be exactly the same. But I forget like birth is different for every single baby and every single person. And so it's like it's probably not gonna happen. And I have to keep reminding myself of that because like I wake up in the morning and I'm like, oh my gosh, like. If I feel anything down there, like, I'm like, oh, my water broke and I didn't realize, you know, like, and every night I go to bed, like, thinking I'm gonna wake up at 3 a.m. and the baby's gonna come, you know, but it's like, that's just not the case. And so it's just like, I think that's where all my nerves come from is I feel very strongly that this delivery and the birth, um, or just how it's like initiated is going to be different than Sebastian's. I don't know how, I hope it's not in a dramatic way, but I just have a feeling it's just going to be different. And so I just don't know how it's gonna happen. And that is just like, for, I'm a planner. So this is like really hard for me. But like I said, just trying to trust in my body and trust in this whole birth process right now. Uh, last week, I felt like she was gonna come within days. I was like, I feel like by a week from today, like me and Ruben last Sunday, we were like, I feel like a week from today, she is going to be here. And we had expressed that to each other. We had talked to our parents. We had both said that. And we felt really strongly about that. And then individually, within the few days after that, we both had a feeling like, no, that it's not happening this week um and we didn't talk about it until like just a day or two ago like it had been 
several days since we were both like, she's coming this week. And then we were like in the car talking and we were like, I don't think she's coming as soon as we thought. I think it's gonna be a little bit longer than we had anticipated. So it's just weird how we went from like, because we both felt so strongly, like she is coming so quick. And then we both like, almost immediately as we said the words out loud, like we're like, nope, she's not so. Uh, we'll we'll see. I don't know. Other than that, I am feeling very ready for her to come now. Like I said, I've had to-do lists on to-do lists. Some with like important things that I've been needing to get done before she comes, and then some of the lists with just things I'd like to get done, like cleaning our whole apartment. That was not necessary. Our apartment is generally clean all the time. We clean. When Bash goes down for a nap, we clean every night so that we wake up to a clean apartment in the morning. We are generally clean people. So it's not like she would have been coming into like a hoarder house, pigsty, like disgusting home, you know? But I just wanted to get these things done. It was important to me, but it, I knew it wasn't a priority. But I was able to get everything done, both priorities and not priorities. And so I'm feeling literally fully ready. And like now I'm at the point where it's like, I don't have to do anything and now I can rest. And that does feel really good. So literally whenever she comes, I kind of hope she gives me a couple days so I can like fully rest but at the same time it's like you come whenever you want girl you make your debut because mama's feeling ready whereas before i like last week when we were both feeling like she's gonna come any day now i was like no i need a few days if she comes right now it's gonna give me anxiety but now i'm at the point where it's just like you come come when you want come as you are we are ready, she can come whenever. So that is a really good feeling to know that like, I feel fully prepped and I'm sure there will be small things here and there that I think of that I can still do until she comes. But for the most part, it's like, now my job is just to rest and relax and get as much rest as I can before she comes. And so, yeah. As far as actual rest, <laughs> this is the last little part of my update. I have been having insomnia the past few days and it is killing me. I like, I'm not the greatest sleeper. I'm a pretty light sleeper, but as long as it's like not close to 5 a.m., I feel like I can usually fall back asleep really easily as long as there's no like super loud noises or especially like I'm exposed to light. If the light gets turned on or I'm looking at a screen or something, I will wake up fully, but I'm usually like, I still can usually get back to bed if it's the middle of the night, but lately, I cannot and so I've been waking up um, I've been waking up very consistently at 4 a.m. lately it's also been super random but I cannot go back to sleep for the life of me this is insomnia I've never really had insomnia where I have not been able to fall back asleep but yeah lately it's just like it's killing me y'all <laughs> anyhow we're gonna end this but first before we end it I'm gonna do a little belly shot I hope I can get my belly. Let's see. So this is what my belly's looking like. 38 weeks pregnant. She's not super low. She's not super high. But she's in there and she's getting big. It's crazy to look at my belly and like look at past pictures and videos and see how small she was. But this is where we are. 38 weeks. Any day now she could come. Anyhow, we don't know when she'll come, like I've said a million times, by the time you see this, she could be here, or she could still be a couple days, actually. We're down to like days, not even weeks, days. Whoa, <laughs> away, so we will see, but if you wanna keep up with baby girl and me and when she's coming, make sure to follow me on Instagram. Um, I do have a couple of weeks of pre-planned content that will be going up on YouTube and hopefully she comes in those weeks so that I can take some time off after she's born to just rest and relax and spend time with her and my family. If you want to keep up to date on everything, make sure to follow me on Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe down below and hit the notification bell if you're new and if you want to see my birth vlog. I have so much like fun, good just newborn yumminess coming. <laughs> I'm so excited. 
So anyhow, we're gonna end here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys like seeing this video and hopefully I won't be doing another bump date and hopefully she'll be coming soon, but we will see. So anyhow, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys. Bye.